Hi there. So today we're going to talk about how to solve problems rendering in DaVinci Resolve 18. So what I've discovered doing more complex videos is sometimes it will scrub on the timeline just fine. You can even play through your, your finished edit on the timeline without any issues. But when you go to render, it just halts somewhere for no apparent reason and DaVinci gets locked up and depending on how you handle that lockup, you can even wind up corrupting some of the files. So I'm going to show you today how to deal with that. Let's get started. Welcome back. This is Fuzzy Tutorials and I'm Fuzzy D. All right. So what we're looking at here is one of my more recent projects. This particular project, I've got a lot of layers of stuff. And what I've noticed is when this problem rears its ugly little head, it's usually because you're using one or more tools uh, that are fusion based, um, especially ones that you've designed yourself. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why this is. Um, I've gone through and, and checked code multiple times on these. I've even gone to the forums and had them check code. And according to everything everybody is saying, they should work just fine. And on smaller videos, they do. Uh, where I run into trouble is when I have these longer videos, and especially when I'm using two of those types of tools. There, I, after lots of fighting with, <laughs> with this kind of thing, I finally figured out how to work around this, and it seems to work every time. I'm not going to show you it actually locking up on the, on the render page, because sometimes it'll, it'll do it in different spots, and, and it'll, it just takes a lot of extra time. So just if you run into this, well, this, is, this is how you solve it. Okay, so let's let's take a quick look at the deliver page here. So when you're going to deliver a project, uh, the first thing you want to do is hit your shift Z to zoom out the to the full timeline. Then as you're as you're doing your render, uh, take a note of exactly where it stops. Then we're gonna we're gonna solve this kind of one section at a time. Uh, very often, if you get a large enough chunk in the first area that's causing issues, then it'll go through the rest of the way without a problem. Okay. So let's go back to the edit page here. And now I've created a. The, this was my backup timeline when I was working on this, but we're gonna pretend that this was the main timeline that I edited on, and then we're going to create a backup and we're going to work with that backup rather than the original that way if you have to go back and edit something you don't have to go and undo all these steps that we're going to show you now they can be undone as long as you don't delete the original render in place files that are created in the cache but these files get so big on these large projects that you can't have them hanging around after you've completed the project and parked it in your completed bin so that's why I like to maintain the two separate timelines like this. Uh, plus, if you run into any issues along the way, you'll have your original uh, set out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything here. Oh, actually, let me get a better, better position here. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing. And then we're going to, you can right click and hit copy, or you can hit control C on the keyboard or command C if you're on a Mac. And then we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna right click in an empty spot, go to timelines, create new timeline. And let's call this um, render prep. And I'm, I'm going to match the number of video tracks and audio tracks. So we've got five video tracks. So we're going to 
update that and we've got four audio tracks that's already in there we're just going to leave it at empty timeline use project settings because you want to match you know whatever your main project is based in so we'll hit create and now we can click in here somewhere and i can just hit Control v or command v if you're on a mac and you'll see it it populated everything in here so let's pretend that um one of these one of these spots here let's move, the, move up the timeline so you can see i've got this uh this narrator inset which is a, a tool of my design and then i've got this zoomy tool which is uh, also one of my designs the zoomy tool i've actually got available for download off my website so if you want to get a copy of that you can download it for free or you can give me a donation or you can download it for free try it out and then inside of the tool you can click a button to to donate make sure you check that out if you like and you can find that at fuzzyd.ca and uh, i'll pop that up on screen here for you and i'll there's also a link down in the description for the website okay so let's pretend that we've got uh, an issue often for me it's happening right when I've got uh, my Zoomy tool in use. So if we scroll a little bit after you can see, we scroll a little bit on the timeline, you can see you've got the Zoomy tool. Now the way this Zoom tool works, um, I actually put it on an adjustment clip. You can put it directly on a video, but it can sometimes be a little wonky. Well, by putting on an adjustment clip above it, it, uh, it works really nice but often I run into an area on right where one of these uh, little zoom sections are so let's pretend that that's where the issue is so you you, you notice that it's stopping right on that frame in your delivery tab so we're not going to actually pick this spot right here we're gonna go a little bit to the left of it this is what I've what I've discovered over time is that you need to get a little bit of area in front and then maybe a few little areas behind it. Now I used to try just doing a, a render in place on one single thing. Problem with that is then all of a sudden you're not getting the proper layering. So if you look over here Right, you see where it's got these so you've got like these transparent sections around this and got the same later on in the zoom so if you try and render in place on a single one of those then it just blacks out everything underneath and you can't view it and then you have to set it to like uh, um, overlay or screen or something like that and, but then that messes up opacities and stuff like that so that's really not workable so what we're going to do is we're actually going to select everything here in this area so that when i apply a cut it'll cut the whole thing so i've got my playhead in the right spot so i'm just going to cut it and then we're going to move the playhead air chunk over here And we're gonna cut this as well after I select everything. Okay, so it gives us cuts all the way through. So now I'm going to select all of this stuff. Probably didn't need to cut the music and the, as well, but it doesn't hurt to do it. So once that chunk is selected, now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go up here and select render in place. Okay, and then we want to set how we're going to render this. Uh, you could leave it as this, but typically what I do is I just render it the same as I'm rendering the whole project. So for me, that's usually going to be MP4, H.265. Now there is some issues with uh, AMD video cards. 
uh, when you're using them to do the hardware rendering, it's fine if you're doing the final render, but when you're rendering in place, then later when you go to render the whole video, that section you rendered in place will come out all blurry. So if you're running an AMD card, what you wanna do is switch to native encoding. Now that's obviously gonna make it a lot slower, but unfortunately it's what you gotta deal with if you're running a, an AMD card. Now they may have fixed that with the latest update, but that latest update was bricking a lot of systems, well, like bricking the graphics drivers, and even bricking the boot drive. So I haven't installed it. They did come out with an update a couple days later, but I just don't trust it until I hear back from some other people. So in the meantime, just switch that to native. If you're on an NVIDIA card, you should be fine. And you want to include all your video effects and fusion composition and color grading, all that kind of stuff. Just check all the boxes. And now you've got an encoding profile, but just, I just leave it on auto. I've never had any issues with that. And then we're in, oh, sorry. Actually, I jumped the gun. <laughs> I just about gave you bad information. No, what we have to do first is we right click this and we go up and we go new compound clip. Okay, so we'll call this um, render prep one. Okay. So now we've got that as a compound clip so we won't get stuff suddenly going black and obscuring other things. Now we can right click on this and we can render in place. So we've already gone over all that. So we'll just hit render. And then you wanna choose, the first time you do this, you're gonna to wanna to choose where your cache is gonna go. I always do this on my old spinning rust hard drive because it's four gigs as opposed to I've only got a gig on my, uh, on my NVMe work drive so, and this is going to put it in the right spot so we'll just select that as our folder and it's going to render it there we go well that took a little longer than, than i than it said it would it actually took almost three minutes but that's fairly typical because it tries to estimate based on the video card that you have but then of course we chose native rendering so that's kind of what happens there so now, this will probably solve it for you, but what you're gonna do is you make sure you save, and then we're gonna go to the Deliver tab. Make sure we zoom out. And then you do your settings, and you add to your queue, try to render it. If it all renders, great. If not, just make sure you take a note of exactly where it is and you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to go grab a chunk of that like we did here. So you're going to cut out that chunk, select it all, make a compound clip and then render in place and just rinse and repeat until you can get the whole thing to render. And it's once you know the trick of it, it's a pretty easy solution. It just takes a little playing around. Now, sometimes uh, DaVinci will come out with an update and I won't have the problem for a while but then they'll come out with another update and it breaks again <laughs> so that's uh, that's probably if you've been using uh, DaVinci for a while you've probably noticed that happening a few times uh, especially on the last five or six updates I hope you learned something today this was just a quick one so if you found this valuable I sure appreciate it if you would click that like button and subscribe hit that notification bell. And uh, I just want to uh, give a shout out. I've actually gotten involved with another platform. It's, it's the uh, creator platform. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link down in the bottom. And uh, that's a really good platform, especially if you want to start up your own little community. And there's lots of really good communities in there. I've got my fuzzy tutorials is in there. And there's also a whole section on DaVinci and beginner DaVinci stuff, which uh, you might find really valuable because a lot of different uh, creators are contributing to that. For those of you who've been following one of my other YouTube channels, you know I'm on this crazy new diet. And uh, I've also got some coverage there about that. 
So it's a really great platform, very flexible, and I think it's got a lot of potential. And you know, with some of the things going on with the YouTube lately, and some of the other big, big platforms, I think maybe it's a good idea to always have some options open. So if you've already are established on all these different channels and keep them updated with everything you're doing, and then if there's an issue on one, you still got access to your viewership on the others. So that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out. We sure appreciate you coming. We'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.